How do you get past impossible? When you when you yeah. think like when you're coming across a challenge like that, how do you get past that word impossible and make something like this happen? Daniel, geez. We're getting real deep right well, now. Well, no, there there's just like a a faith in the work. Meaning Andrew Stanton always says, like, trust the process, trust the process. Part of that process, even though we've heard it to death there, the process is like, this is a really tough challenge, but we'll just keep attacking at it until we can get it to work. Peter, thanks so much for sharing your Oh, yeah. Us. Thank you, Daniel. What a way to start the morning. What an incredible, like, sequence of footage that we got to see and oh, seeing the, the love and work put into it. Yeah. Uh, the creative ingenuity of Pixar never fails to just blow me away what you guys are able to yeah, do. Yeah. Um, but Thank I also love that we got to see, you know, windbreakers versus crop dusters, <laughs> yeah. which is a great, <laughs> it's yeah. a great joke. I was laughing at that the entire time <laughs> yeah, I was on screen. Yeah. No, I got to ask you, you know, you mentioned that this is an immigrant story. Yeah. And there's a moment from the sequence that we saw where you're talking, where we get to see these characters coming to the big city. Yes. And then right immediately their names are changed. Yes. And I think that was so powerful because even for myself and for my for my family and friends who have come here and immigrated here, yeah. first thing that happens. Yes. Different language. Yeah. We're changing your name, your birthday's changing, everything's changing. Yeah. Why was that so important for you to showcase in the very beginning of the film? It was something that uh, was authentic to my family and and a lot of members of the crew. Uh, every uh, every a little bit of those aspects, even though that it's done in this really fun sort of uh, uh, elemental way, um, um, meaning like he's he's asking to spell his name, but he's using fire of like of like the sounds of a fireplace to do it. But like my my father, the, you know, he was the first to, uh, Korean to come to in our family to come to New York, and his name, how to spell that, was all wrong, you know. And it's it's Son, but it's spelled Son, and like all of that was such a real thing that he didn't even know. And so there's this naivete that happened that just a lot of my friends that were we were taught we were making the story brought this truth up. The idea of, you know, um, 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 the father walking through an air character in the beginning. It's meant to be a funny, like, cool little charming thing. But at the same time, he goes, watch it. A little, a little homage to Midnight Cowboy, you know, like I'm walking here. But he adds Sparky to it. Watch it, Sparky. And that little sharp little sense of maybe is that xenophobia? What is that? All came from... Uh, working with the crew and finding moments there because there are a lot of immigrants on our show that were literally talking about that happened to me, this happened to me, and, and uh, yeah. No, it, it's an absolutely beautiful moment in the film. And then you have these two beautiful characters that, you know, we really haven't gotten to see a rom-com like oh, right. yeah. in this sense before. Yeah. And to have it just so beautifully animated, uh, like I'm just curious for yourself, you mentioned, you know, you've been at Pixar for, for yeah. a long time. How do you get past impossible? When you, when you yeah. think like when you're coming across a challenge like that, how do you get past that were impossible and make something like this happen. Daniel, geez. We're getting real deep right well, now. Well, no, there, there's just like a a faith in the work. Meaning Andrew Stanton always says, like, trust the process, trust the process. Part of that process, even though we've heard it to death there, the process is like, this is a really tough challenge, but we'll just keep attacking at it until we can get it to work. And it was essentially that mantra that, you know, you know, can we do a fire character? I, I, you know, like there were times I said, we can only get five close ups. I remember Paul Kanyak, one of our, our supervisors, just like, that's all we can get the fire to run right now. And it's like, we're going to need more than five close ups. What yeah. do we do? Uh, but they kept working at it. And then um, um, as we're building the story, that team just kept building. And so it evolved and they finally, you know, unlocked it. It's really impressive to see that because I think, you know, of all the years of growing up watching Pixar films yeah. and you see what's being able to accomplish now and you know yeah. you mentioned you know the hair on Sully and Monsters Inc and I even think of like Bugs Life having those the oh, army yeah. of ants was another huge yeah that, totally that that Pixar had to solve and kind of get that going how like when you're are, is every like moments of I guess the fire characters and the, the water characters are like is that animated like how is that you yeah. know happening in those environments is that like all real time kind of reflections happening and all that um it's a mix of both some of my favorite um, um, live action movies that have effects, it's the multimedia of it. Like between Lord of the Rings and Jurassic Park when those came out, like, oh, it's a CG dinosaur, but the next shot is a puppet of a foot. And right. the next shot is something that like, they, uh, uh, you know, like uh, a hand thing. And it was just mixed in. So essentially we were doing the same thing where there were some shots that were just simulated fire. Then there were some shots that were hand animated. There's some, it's just a, a big game of, of do not look behind the curtain, you know, sort of a thing, you know? I love that, and and I'm I'm curious when when you have these characters who uh, are 
trying to you're trying to figure out ways of like making them work and move in the environment. Um, I, I love that you were talking earlier today about the chair and making it look like the fireplace. Yeah. Were there any other ones that you were like, this is really clever? Was there a moment you're making like, that's really cool. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I mean, the water characters living in a pool, you could feel all the artists like coming up with so many d different ideas of, you know, like, oh, how do they demark their um, living room? Oh, they have those little like little floaties with strings from a pool. And then the idea of inflatable chairs uh, of course, it would be perfect for water people, but a fire person couldn't sit in that. How could you do that? And so things like that, you know, if you look at the fire shop, it is made of a dozen fireplaces. And so it was just like, oh, we want to make this neighborhood and this home feel like a safe place for fire, a hearth for them. And uh, but then when she exits that town to go into the city, that she she's off kilter and she's off center and uh, how to do that. And um, a, a lot of that kind of game of, of uh, tongue in cheek of like elementizing something was yeah. part of the game. Yeah. I, know, I know there's going to be a lot more that we're going to see once we get to watch the full yeah. film. Uh, I did want to talk about the music because yeah. Thomas Newman's score yeah. is incredible from what we've heard. And yeah. there's a lot of different cultural and different like ethnic sounding music in there. And yes. I was wondering if you could talk more about that blend of what we're getting yeah. in Elemental. Because it sounds very different from any Pixar score that we've heard before. Yeah. He, he, the first the process with Thomas in making something he works in layers, which is not an experience that I've had before. You know, like the example of like when you go to the scoring stage, the orchestra's there, and then on the downbeat, everything that's being recorded is the soundtrack. That's not how he works. He just was like, okay, the orchestra is just going to do this little one eighth of the score. Then everything else I'm going to record in separate layers. And so that already was a metaphor of like diverse different things coming together to, to, to become harmonious. Uh, he knew that in the in, in and so in making it, our, one of our early discussions was just about like, I don't want to appropriate any one culture, uh, and something that we learned in casting and in, in, in understanding the culture of fire and water was disruption. Like you want to just go like, oh, you feel like it, there's there's it's giving you a little bit of those vibes, but then it'll take a turn into something else. Like for example, with the the Irish people, I, I know there's like a tabla instrument that you can hear that's very from the Indian culture. But then there's an Irish fiddle that you might hear that also, oh wait, and so it'll keep um, I'm taking its little turns. But Thomas did it all by his focus on emotion. And that's something that like I was intellectualizing, like, no, 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 she's from Firetown, so Firetown needs a signature. But, uh, but Tom would just go, yeah, but like, Peter, please talk about the performance motivation. I'm like, well, this whole place is about safety and trust. And like, I want to hit that. And then so she, that he would start building the music in this way. It was probably the greatest experience that I've had on, on this project in the seven years on this thing was watching him uh, take these ideas and reinterpret it to this musical lens. It was amazing. I love that. And I, I think like Pixar in general is just a very collaborative space. And yes. You've been there for so long. Yeah. You know, other than the incredible people that you get to work with yeah. day in and day out and work on a project like that, what's kept you there for all these years? Um, the relationships that you've made there and this this sort of high of, of collaborating. Um, it's not just about being in a room and then like pitching ideas. There is, I swear to you, there's a resonance that happens. I'm sure you've experienced this in your life when all of a sudden everyone's humming at the same frequency and just pitching ideas and you're laughing and you're crying and whatever. That time happens in every department. Uh, uh, and uh, um, it's, you don't always get it, but you're always hunting for it. And uh, that energy is the thing that like I love you know like the difference with a lot of other students I went to Warner Brothers and a bunch of other students when you're done with a project you were off and you were looking for another one here you're just like moving you're with the same people yeah. moving to the same show and you're watching everyone evolve and grow and uh, um, and resonate in that way that's just been something you just keep going on it's very cool because like you see on every on every film or be it on like on a Disney plus like Pixar yeah. show or on a film you see that that Pixar senior creative team yes. you see though that identity I think continue through and I think that's yes. something true in all Pixar films and projects right? yeah no you're absolutely right yeah it's really proud I'm really proud of that that's incredible you know I, I it's just funny because a few years ago when we were like, my co-host and I were in California yeah. and we drove by the Pixar campus oh, so you yeah. feel it like you see it like we couldn't yeah. go in but you, we you gotta come, Dan. You, you I, gotta come. You're rocking that we're shirt, please. I know. We tried. We we're like, listen, yeah. I'm wearing what Pixar. Like, yeah. do you want me to bring my P Pixar like VHS tapes yeah. with me? I'll show you to get me in. But uh, no, like you feel that energy there, and I and I thank you so much for all the years of incredible yeah. films that you've gotten to work on, 
And uh, thank you so much for your time today. We're, no, we thank you. Wait to see this film. Looks incredible. Oh my god, that incredible. means so much, Dan. And you have no idea. I can't wait for you to see it. I'm so curious. Did you find it? Did you find it? Because <laughs> there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs in there. You know, some from friends. Like we, you know, like there's a production designer who passed away. Um, Ralph Eggleston, who helped production design the first Toy Story movie. And like, there's personal little nuggets of him in the film. And so there's, it's just full of so many of the people that we work with. And uh, boy, I hope you can find some of those. Thank you, yeah, it's full of life. So thank yeah. you so much again Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure meeting you. Yeah, pleasure meeting you.